Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today we have some I don't work here lady stories and our first story of the day is by Seda Another 9 Nintendo don't work here. So this just happened to me and I can't express how good my heart feels about having had a good experience with some customers. Not to mention at a place I don't work at. So I was out at the oh so famous mall wart looking around for some Nintendo products specifically Amiibos. For those who don't know what they are, they're basically plastic figurine toys that have coating inside them and, depending on the game you're playing, if they are compatible with it, they provide special perks to the game you play. For me, I'm a Super Smash Bros. fan and I was looking to see if my local mall ward had anything to check out. Spoilers, they didn't. But me being me, I was busy perusing the aisle they had for Nintendo items, and as I was looking down it, I was waiting for this one woman who was really invested on her phone and looking at the games that were on display behind the glass. Heck, I'm 6 foot 3 and standing straight up, all I need to do to see the rest of the small aisle's worth of contents is stretch a little. But there's just one part of the aisle that I can't see because part of the display was set up different. So I attempt to speak to the woman, trying to get her attention. From the way she's standing, looking back and forth on her phone, as she's likely at a fair 5 foot 3 to 5 foot 5. She is lost and doesn't know what she's even getting. So I ask my question to her, and the conversation goes something like this. Me drawing breath to speak and try my best to be polite. Hi, I don't mean to bother you. Her in a panic. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in your way. I'll move, sorry. Me waving my hand to dismiss her fears about being a disturbance, oh don't worry at all, I was just going to ask you, you know how some game franchises have small little figurines, do you see any in this aisle, they should be called amiibo, I'm trying to find one. Her after taking a second to check for me, uh no I'm sorry I don't see any. I take this as a polite exchange and merely shrug, I didn't think that the location would have any, it's 3 days until Christmas, what can I expect? So I start to tell her that she has been really nice to help me, and I start to try and walk past her. But then she starts to ask me something back. Can I maybe ask you something? I'm super lost and I'm trying to buy something for my daughter's kids. One boy, one girl. Me having nothing better to do and being happy to help someone if I can, say, oh sure, I like helping. What's your question? What's up? She starts to go into an explanation for a few minutes, and while I'm talking to her, it becomes clear that she's shopping for a 9-year-old and a kid that's around 5 or 6. She never really made it clear, but apparently the kid is so young that he doesn't sound like the type to think about putting his switch down gently. I recommended she also get a screen protector for that kid just to be safe. Eventually, as we were nearing the halfway point of the conversation, as I've realized we've talked for probably half an hour, she gets the information from her daughter about what games that her son and daughter have, and I start to explain the difference between the many Mario games that are on display. One's Mario Kart, one's a bundle of Mario games, one lets you make Mario stages. She was very attentive to what I had to say. I couldn't have been more eager to make sure that what she chose was the right gift. She then proceeds to move out of the way for another woman to walk down the aisle, who I'll simply call Woman 2. Woman 2 starts to ask if she can interrupt, apologizing for interrupting us before she asks for my help. And here's where I say it. Sure. Oh, but I should mention really quick, I don't work here, I just know a lot about Nintendo. Both the first woman and Woman 2 are surprised. I thought you worked here, you were super enthusiastic about helping. The other saying, yeah hon, you're wearing a lanyard. I start, pointing out that the lanyard I'm wearing has the design for a nearby medical marijuana dispensary across the river. I got it from my mother, she works there. I don't think that the employees from Mallward would be letting me wear this on the floor, do you? Also, uh, they wear vests nowadays. They both laugh and realize their mistakes, but they're also very happy that I was willing to go out of my way to see that they were helped. With how little employees were around on the floor, I just felt like having fun talking about the differences between games and finding out what kind of video game would be a good choice to buy for a little boy and girl. And you know what? I wouldn't mind doing it again. Honestly, for anyone that remotely enjoys games like this, those kinds of people could just talk all day about that kind of stuff. 
If you were walking past someone that looked very confused as to what they were wanting to get, relating to something that you knew very much about, it doesn't have to be games specifically, would you be the kind of person that would willingly reach out and try and assist them even though you don't work there? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Damon. I'm not a bouncer, but that drunk guy is a douche. Obligatory, this happened pre-COVID, an anticlimactic ending. I like pinball. I play in local tournaments a lot. This happened after a pinball tournament at a bar that has about 10 machines on a Wednesday night in a college town. I happen to go to this bar a lot and so I know and am friendly with the bartenders and managers. We had finished up the tournament at about 10 that night and I won. I got a small trophy for it and around $50 in cash. I was standing outside the door to the bar talking to the tournament organizer, a woman, and a very short man who owns another pinball venue about 30 minutes away. There was a sloppily drunk guy who was hanging out near the door that kept trying to get involved in our conversation despite our repeated rebuffs of his attempts. As we were talking, a young woman walks up to us and tries to hand me her ID. I laugh and tell her I don't work there to just go in and the bartender will check her ID. Generally from Thursday to Saturday, there's a bouncer just inside the door after 6, but it's usually not busy enough on other days to justify it. Anyway, after she went in, the drunk guy starts ranting at me that we could have told her that there's a $10 cover charge and made some money, and how we could still do this, just wait for the next few people to come. He would not just shut the freak up despite me telling him to freak off that I wasn't going to do it, and that scamming people for 10 freaking dollars is pathetic to begin with. Eventually, I got tired of listening to him, so I excused myself and go inside to find the manager on duty to tell him what happened and about the guy hanging around outside and his plan. I barely start to explain things when he runs out the door. I hurry after him to find the manager standing there yelling at the drunk guy about how he had already been kicked out and to stop harassing customers and to freak off before he called the cops. The drunk guy kept objecting and started squaring up to the manager, who I might add was much taller and much wider than him. It wasn't going to go well, looking like he wants to fight. The two people I was speaking with earlier were standing there looking on in shock, so I discreetly hand my trophy to them and ask them to hold it for a minute, and then step up beside the manager, hoping to make the drunk guy think that if he wanted to start something, it's going to be two versus one. This fact apparently made its way through the drunken haze because he stumbled off down the street throwing insults and profanities over his shoulder. The manager explained to me that he had showed up sometime during our tournament already drunk and was harassing other customers slash aggressively hitting on women at the bar and was thrown out for it. He gave me around $10 in free tokens and thanked me for letting him know he was still outside causing trouble. Probably anticlimactic, but it's the first time in over a decade I've been mistaken for a worker somewhere. I imagine there's many nights where you wouldn't envy a bar manager or bouncers if they were there. Mixing people and alcohol, you're gonna get some tough situations anyways. This next story is by Alice Reads This, Unobservant at the Grocery Store. Didn't happen to me, I just observed and no great explosion at the end, but I have to admit, I've wondered about exaggerations on the stories here. Wondered how people could be unable to tell an employee from a shopper, or how they could double down on their insistence that the other person works there. Well... I was at my local grocery store. It's not a big place, but it has what you need for a quick run. It's important to know that despite this, there are tons of employees around. One of the few places you can actually find help on just about any aisle. And they all wear black polos or black chef jackets with the store logo on them. Standing at the freezer door, I hear a male voice say pretty loudly, where is such and such? At the same time, I hear a woman's voice that seems to be getting closer to me. I glance over and there's a man with a card facing away from me and a woman on her phone having a very animated conversation and walking towards me. Also important to note, she is wearing a nice bright yellow blouse. He says a second time as she gets closer to him, where is the XYZ? Now I'm staring at them. This is interesting. She breezes straight past him and he yells, hello. Yes, the long drawn out Karen hello after her. 
This lady was either very focused on her phone or has chess master levels of ignoring people because she never broke stride or even glanced his way. As a parting shot, just after she passed me, he flapped his arms out in frustration and screamed after her, Well, do you work here or not? I just stood there laughing and thinking, wow, they do exist. So no arguments, no threats to get the manager, just a very unobservant guy who can't tell a shopper in a blouse from an employee in uniform on first, second, third, or even fourth try. Oh, they definitely do exist. Either that or this subreddit is filled with hundreds of falsified stories. Some might be exaggerated, but I definitely think there's a lot of truth in a lot of them. This next story is by Sky Ribbon. No, you can't have a doctor's note. So about two years ago, I was heavily pregnant with extreme morning sickness, one of the lucky few to have it in the third trimester. I also am my partner's main form of transportation as he can drive. So naturally, I take him to work every morning. Unfortunately, this means we were occasionally late due to me throwing up in the morning. One day I got extremely sick and my boyfriend had to call in to say he'd be later than usual, and we showed up an hour late. Normally it was something like 5 minutes, and his supervisors were very understanding of the situation. So no big deal, things happen. It sucked that he was so late today, but whatever. So after I dropped him off, I chilled in the car for a second cause motion sickness, and I hear someone tapping on my window. It was his boss. Okay. So I open the window, thinking he's gonna ask about the baby in chit chat, whatever, go, hey man, what's up, how's it going? Hey, so I'm gonna need you to bring me a doctor's note? And I just stared at him. I had zero idea how to answer besides, for what? Well, to verify you're actually sick, since partner had to come in late. The audacity. Dude, I'm eight months pregnant, I'm not sick. Okay, but I'll still need a doctor's note. Bro, I don't work for you, and even if I did, you're not entitled to even ask for my medical information, dude. What the heck? This is so offensive. You are a stranger. We've spoken like twice. I mean, it was a little anticlimactic because he just went, sorry, sorry, and walked away. Never brought it up again, but like, dude, what? Super bizarre. How dumb can that manager possibly be? Like OP said, you can't just ask for that information, let alone for that information from the spouse of your employee. I hope the manager realized how yikes that entire situation was. Our next story is by John Bear 1962 It happened again, guess it's Xmas. I've shared a couple of stories here, and being in Australia, the stories seem to be less common. Doing my Xmas shopping, all going good. Had to get an extra present for my wife and was struggling. We've been married for 15 years, so it's a bit tough to find something that's a little bit original. A store in Australia is called Big W, which is similar to Target, and I was wearing very old shorts and t-shirt. So I was comparing some different perfume gift packs when a dressed up, lots of makeup, big hair woman, 40 to 50 years I'd guess, asked me what I thought of a gift she'd picked up. Is this one any good? Don't know. I like these ones. Showing her the ones I'd picked up. Why don't you know? It's an easy question. So why don't you know the freaking answer then? How dare you speak to me like that? Freak off. Walking away. I'm going to speak to the manager about you. I ignored her. About 10 to 15 minutes later, I'm walking to the checkout and this woman was there talking to a couple of staff members. Nothing happened. She did not even recognize me when I walked past her. She was talking to the staff about this very rude man and didn't recognize that it was me when I was right in front of her. Not really an I don't work here story, but I thought it might fit here. Maybe I was a bit harsh on her, but, well, Australia. I mean, to be fair, they were being pretty curt with OP. As soon as OP said, I don't know, I like these ones, they go, why don't you know it's an easy question? Well, you don't work there and this person isn't entitled to any kind of answer from you, so you have every right to respond as negatively as you want. And our final story of the day is by Roxy Tin. I'm just visiting dead people. My husband and I, joined by family from out of town, paid our respects yesterday at the graves of his parents and grandparents. 
I recognize death and grief evoke a wide spectrum of responses, and I appreciate that my husband's family focuses on good memories and the joy of living. We first visited my husband's parents. Gathered around the headstone, everyone seemed glad to be together. Even as we talked about loss, we joked. When we arrived at Nana and Grandpa's resting place, a man in the next row was complaining loudly to a woman on Zoom about the condition of his loved one's gravesite. He paced and flailed his arms. We've got to get this fixed. The woman squawked back, wah, wah, wah. About four feet from the grave marker was a small garden bed with a memorial bench. The man was distraught that the bench was not perfectly square with the marker. He buzzed among graves in our vicinity showing the woman on Zoom how other benches were situated. Meanwhile, we had encircled Nana and Grandpa's grave and were chatting. The man called out, making eye contact with me. Are you with the cemetery? I said no, and he returned to his diatribe. I looked at us in parkas, flannel shirts, jeans, and colorful masks, wondering what he saw that made him think we worked there. Was it our levity? Did my big sunglasses give me an air of authority? Maybe in the throes of personal pain, even displaced pain, anyone looks like someone who can help. It's definitely an area and a subject that can be very sensitive to a lot of people, and I'm glad to see that OP and their entire group seem to be rather low-key about the situation. Even if the man's reaction seems misplaced, it's probably just something that means an incredible amount to them, and I don't think you can blame them for that. Hopefully they were able to get some kind of resolution to their concerns. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.